been a lot of talk about the Titans' new offense and you know new terminology, new tempo, speed, that sort of thing. How have you fit into that, and how does that offense fit you? Oh uh, yeah, completely new offense. I'm just coming here trying to learn everything, um, get used to the terminology that has changed, and just getting in, working in, and doing what, doing what I can whenever the play is called, and just learning each and every day in the meetings, and then letting transition, letting transition on the field. Is it running the ball, Derek? Still basically the same thing when you guys are running the ball? Yeah, uh, that part hasn't changed much. Just the terminology part. Is it, is it offense, Derek? Is one of the reasons you came to OTAs maybe a little bit earlier than we've seen you in the past? Is that? Yeah, yeah, to try to, um, you know, try to get on early, as early as I can, um, and and learn and be around the guys, and just just fly around and, and be out here with them and you know get some reps in and just when I come back, I'm ready to go there and count. This team, maybe the direction they, I know it's early, but a lot of new faces. It's kind of a different team than last year. How do you like what you've seen so far? Yeah, I mean, we're just working. I'm trying to get better, keep competing against one another, coming here ready to learn, I'm ready to improve. And that's all you can ask um, out of your teammate each and every day just come out here wanting to get better. How was that relationship with, with Rand Carthon developed for you? I know, you know, you had the rumors of you being shopped, et cetera, but how have you been able to just kind of sidetrack that and develop a relationship with Rand Carthon? Yeah, you know I mean, talking to him, um, uh, meeting him in person, on the face with a name, and you know, just just doing doing all those things. You know, when you get here, and um, you know, we get get into football, and not worry about the other stuff. So, Derek, you've always been able to focus on football, whether it's a contract year or not. How much does that maybe help this year? You know, now that you've reached that so-called magical age for running backs at thirty, is it just keep working and doing what you what's worked for you so far? Working hard. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to change what I do. Just continue to work, uh, be who I am, and let everything else take care of itself. You've seen a lot of running backs coming here since you've been here. What, what, what's your first impression of Gattajay and uh, how, you know, how, how much you look forward to kind of working with him? Yeah, um, he comes in um, willing to learn, ready to learn, um, uh, smart, um, attacks every day like he's supposed to. Um, uh, attentive in the meetings and let it just not here on the field. You know, he works hard every day, so you know I'm excited for him and um, what he's able to do um, for this team. What's it like having a new voice in the room uh, with a new coach, with Tony moving over to coach the tight ends? Oh, it's been it's been good. Um, I mean, Tony still joke around every, uh, every now and then. Um, JL's been great. Um, it's been great uh, having him, getting to know him, and um, continue to grow our relationship as this time goes on. I know you talked about the new offense a little bit, but is there anything that you think will help the offense be a little bit more efficient? I know there's been talk of kind of more up-tempo and, and less verbiage in the play calls and that kind of thing. Do you see some things that could that could help out? No, I mean, I'll let Tim handle that and you know, Coach Braves handle that and let us go out there and, and do our job um, and um, continue to get better. And so, I mean, that's all we can do right now at this point, continue to grow as an offense, learn the offense, learn a new system, and come out here and get better every day. Eric, having a guy like J.O. in the room with you, just a different set of eyeballs, have you taken anything from him in the last couple of months? Or does he have a specific perspective that's maybe a little different than what you've had in the past? Um, I mean, yeah, he's um, came from a different team. You know, just getting to know one another, talking about uh, each other's experiences and, you know, different things like that. And, um, you know, what he's seen and what I've seen and what's what's, what's occurred in the past. And you know, just talking football, getting to know one another. How's the uh, transition from learning a new offense in the classroom to taking it out on the field here these last few weeks? Has it uh, been pretty seamless for you? Oh, yeah, it's easy. I mean, JL's been great um, helping us learn everything, making sure we're on our P's and Q's and um, trying to make it as easy as possible um, for us when we get out there. But, you know, sometimes, you know, you have, have mistakes, but you just come out here and learn and continue to grow and try to get better and uh, crisp up the things you need to do to be good in the offense. Derek, there's so many new faces on that offensive line. How much it, uh, of, with the run game is it making sure you're, you know, the chemistry, the coordination, and, and everything is working between you all? Um, yeah, well, I mean, I'm trying to learn what I'm supposed to do, and um, I'm sure the guys are, are doing the same. Um, glad to have the new spaces. Um, guys are working, um, doing, doing what they can to help us and help, help their self in this offense and, and getting better. So excited to have those guys and excited to see what they do when the season comes around. Did you get a chance to talk to KB uh, at all? I know this offseason, both of you guys, there were all kinds of rumor mill involving both of you guys. I wonder if you can kind of sympathize with one another and, and if you've talked about that at all. Um, we talked in the offseason like we always do, but, you know, you can't really 
worry about that too much. Just control what you can control. Continue to work until it's time to get back and get back to work. You uh, back split seem to be splitting out more, going in motion more. How much is Spears adding to the to the, what the running backs are going to be asked to do, and how interesting is it to kind of see the changes there? Um, yeah, I mean it's cool to um, see the backs get opportunity. Um, he's a versatile player, just like Dontrell was, and um, he's good at um, what he does in the past game. So it's going to be exciting for him to be out there and um, get some passes and uh, make some big plays for us. Taylor and Ben both gone. You're now, I guess, the longest tenured guy on the offense. So what does that change your role, your responsibility at all in terms of how you deal with your teammates and all? Uh, no, not at all. No, I definitely miss those guys. But at the end of the day, you know, you got to come to work and do your job and lead by example. And that's what I try to do. Um, any guys have any questions, I'm, I'm here to help. Be the best team I, be the best teammate I can. But, you know, I definitely miss those guys for sure. Derek, Traylon seems like a totally different player entering his second season. Just from your vantage point, what has kind of been the, the change um, from, from year one to year two for him? Um, yeah, uh, he's, he's flying around. I think he spent the offseason here. Um, you can tell he's been working by the way he's been, you know, catching passes and being explosive um, when, when the ball's in his hands. I'm excited for him. Um, ready to see his hard work pays off, and I know he's excited as well. Um, he was rehabbing um, where I work out at, and was able to get a workout workout in with him. He's a really cool dude. Um, yeah, that was that was pretty fun. I've uh, been watching him since I was a little, a little kid, so it was cool to get a workout with him. Is there anything different uh, early part of this off season before you got here for off season program as far as training, who you worked with, or kind of same old, same old. Same old, same old. Nothing changed. How was your charity event over the weekend? Say it again. Your charity event. Oh, it was good. Um, I actually was um, a volunteer. Uh, they. Um, invited me to come speak and got to spend time with uh, Volunteers of America. I thought it was pretty cool what, what they do in the community, around the world, um, the message that they're trying to send out. And um, it was great to be around um, great people um, and spend some time with them and them, them getting to know me and I'm getting to know them and what they're all about. And you know, I definitely uh, appreciate them having me out and um, hearing their message and all the great things that they do because you know, my charity – Foundation tries to do the same thing, so it was a pretty cool experience. You meet Joe Dubin while you're out there at MC? Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, we got the time to. He actually interviewed me while I was on stage. He did all right, though. So. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. He did, he did a good job. How you doing? Good, how are you? I'm good. You got that big old bright smile. <laughs> hey, it's a beautiful day. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that vein, how are you feeling and settling in uh, and now that, you know, getting chances to be on the field and going up against the offense and at this stage of the offseason? Uh, it's been good. You know, it's a lot of work. You know, every day we're working, trying to get better, taking it one day at a time. You know, it's like highs and lows. And right now, OTAs, you're just building, like, the foundation for what you want to see in training camp and then what you want to see in the season. So, um, I think you understand anybody that's been in the league long enough, you realize that this is a real crucial, vital time, you know, especially for somebody new for my, like myself in the system to gel with the guys that are here, uh, just get a feel for, you know, the play calling, you know, how the offense is, you know, just how, how the team is as a whole. And it's been pretty good so far. What's been the biggest difference for you in acclimating to that new system? Um, I think just like anything, terminology wise is always different. Um, because I played obviously in the league for the last four years, um, it's a lot of similarities where you can mirror things like, oh, okay, we run certain things like this. It reminds me of what I did, you know, back in San Francisco. So it makes it a little easier to pick up. Um, but you know, still different techniques, um, different rules, assignments, and you know, so it's just little fine tweaks. It's like, you know, everybody kind of has their their own way to skin the cat. I guess is what you could say. How much do you? Noticing the backs, especially Spears, lining up in the slot, lining up wide, going in motion to make things complicated for, for you guys particularly. No, yeah, it's, a, it's definitely a lot going on. And, you know, I think he's a, a really good route runner. That's so, you know, part of why we bring him, bring him in here. Um, and, you know, we've been going at it. I've been messing with him since the first day uh, that we've been going against each other. And uh, I think he's, he's going to be a really good player. He's got to keep working, take it one day at a time. And so that's why we're all here. We're just working. How are you messing with him? Mostly talking to him? Just talking crap. You know, he might. My um, guard be guarding him or something, and he don't catch the ball. I just whisper in his ear, say something stupid, or we in the locker room. I'm messing with him all the time, so it's all love, though. 
Aziz, you've had several practices without Ke Kevin Byard, and he was back today um, being one of the leaders of the team. How did you maybe notice the energy shift with him being in the back end today? I really didn't notice it at all. No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, man, it's, it's, it's really good, like, just a breath of fresh air. You know, obviously a guy who has a ton of experience. You know, you've been in the league longer than, you know, obviously a, a lot of players. And uh, I think you what, the longest tenured uh, Titan, I want to say. So, I mean, it's just uh, really good to have him in the building. And, you know, I got to uh, meet him at his um, – a uh, fu uh, function that he had earlier in the year, uh, earlier in, in the season, like almost like a month and a half ago when I first got here. Um, so it was good to talk to him again, see him in the building again, and you know everybody was happy to see him, obviously. Look like he made like, his. A guy like Kevin or maybe even Derek that you've seen from afar, maybe played against once or twice, and then you see them on the practice field and see how they work every day. How does it change your perspective of them? Um, I think it's not really changing the perspective, but kind of just validating what you know why they are who they are. Um, Derek, you know, he's a Florida boy, so you know we kind of just met, meshed together off of that. So I think ever since he realized I was from Tampa, uh, we just been talking every single day, chopping it up, and um, obviously, you know, the career that he's had up until this point, and then seeing seeing him out on the field, how he works, and even the Instagram videos, you know, he always popping up doing something crazy, lifting some crazy weights, and even when we get in the weight room. Uh, last week we was trying to lift together. I told him, hey, you live with the lineman. You can't live with me. Uh, so it's been good, man, just to see that up close in person. It's more so just been, um, you know, kind of confirmation of what you already see. Kind of along the same lines, what were your maybe thoughts about Vrabel before you got here? What's it been like being coached by him as far as just how hands-on he is, maybe how intense he is early on? Uh, kind of the same, you know, just kind of like verified – he gets the blue check, I <laughs> guess. So, you know, he is exactly who, who they say he is. You know, obviously he cares a lot about, you know, all phases. I, I don't think he's just in the linebacker room. He pokes his head in the secondary room, D-line. The quarterback say he be in there trying to tell people what to do. So he's all – he got his hand in everything. And I think that just, you know, speaks volumes for, you know, how much he cares about, you know, about this team and about uh, winning, you know, realistically. You talked about Kevin uh, a little bit ago. Um, looked like he kind of made his, his presence felt out there pretty pretty quickly mm -hmm. uh, today as well. Would that be fair to say? Oh, without a doubt, yeah, 100%. Just communication. Well, I mean, obviously you see that was a great play that he made on the uh, PBU, but even just every other play other than that, communicating, lining up. Uh, it was like, you know, it was, he was gone, but you could tell he'd been taking care of himself, you know, obviously a pro uh, all the way through and through um, because he came in and you would have thought he was here the whole time. So that was really good to see. You seem like you have that natural leadership in you, but just now getting into mini camp at this point, getting familiar with that linebacker room, like do you feel like that's becoming more of a natural thing here, specifically early on? Yeah, 100%. I think um, – like, especially when it comes to leadership, like, you, everybody wants to, you know, who know, everybody wants to be the leader of the group and stuff like that. But I think it's just, like, every single day, guys seeing how I work, how I approach the game, uh, which is stuff that I was taught, you know, when I was a rookie coming in. I had Quan Alexander, Malcolm Smith, you know, all these guys, and then playing with guys like Fred Warner, Dre Greenlaw, that, you know, we all fed off of each other's energy. And now to come, you know, into my own, in a sense, and be in a room full of guys who are not looking at you like, you know, lead the way. So um, it's been a, a great opportunity. Uh, that's a part of the reason why I wanted to come here, um, just to kind of even put that part of my of my game on display as well. Uh, and it's been pretty good, you know, just feeding off the other guys. Even Ben obviously has a lot of experience uh, playing against him in the Super Bowl. Um, and then, you know, just all those guys, just I think gelling together, meshing together, it's been pretty good for our group. Amani said he would look at the tape, but felt like the defense won the day, had a lot of broken up passes, stuff like that. Do you agree with that? How are you guys feeling after a, a good day out there? I'm going to always agree with that. You know, I, they might torture us a couple of times, and I still get off the field and tell you that. So, uh, I mean, I would agree. I think it's, it's just good com competitive energy, which is what you want. You know, I was talking to the guys even in the locker room after we just got done, like, at the end of the day, like every single day you coming in here, you compete and you sharpen each other, uh, you know, tools, iron, sharpen iron. And um, that's how we're going we're gonna to be, you know, a winning team. I'm going to Tampa next weekend. Is there any special food I need to bring back for you? <laughs> I'm going to Tampa next weekend too, so <laughs> maybe, we can, maybe we can meet down there. <laughs> Uh, how nice is it to have Kevin back? Uh, you, you'd said that, you know, and Shane had, y'all expected him back. Uh, how did he look out there on the field? Looked like everybody else looked like he knew what he was supposed to be doing and like he was in good shape. So uh, it's good to have everybody out there that's ready to perform and, and able to be out there.
Are there any parts of practice that you look at one way or another to determine what's being a good day and what's not? Uh, no, I mean, I think just looking at the effort for me always, the conditioning, have we improved, have we made corrections from last week, things that we've asked individuals to, to work on, you know, have they tried to, to focus on some of those things? Um, I would say the urgency, I look at the flow of practice, I mean, how we move around, you know, certainly the, the execution is going to be, you know, unfortunately sometimes inconsistent at this time, you know, somebody makes a play or we're moving on to third down or there's pressure or you know we cut a guy loose or whatever it may be so we'll make those corrections and we'll move on but I think that there were some really good things out there. Some things at this point Austin you've seen that you like or some things you'd like to see here you wrap up mini camp and one more well, I think we're learning. I think we're we've put a lot in. You know I think we've put a lot of our first and second down offense in. Um, started on third down and then you know we'll we'll hit the uh, the red zone you know and get a lot of reps there here as we finish up. So you know from that point we've got a lot in stuff that we'll use um, throughout the season. You know, we call banked reps. And then, you know, again, I think there's been some technique stuff and it's been good to be able to practice with some speed. And I like how our guys are trying to take care of each other and, and, and make each other better. You mentioned you looked specifically for progression from the week before, trying to fix those mistakes. Anything specifically you saw today that you felt either offense or defense took a step forward from previous Well, days? I think the communication, I think that there was some good recognition offensively. Um, when we get into third down and some of the things that we're, you know, maybe having a, you know, different play call or trying to get us in the right call at the line of scrimmage. Um, you know, I think where we are in the run game, I think has been good. We've tried to be a little bit more, um, you know, exotic at this time of the year and seeing what we like and see may, what, what we go forward with. I think the D line is, is doing a good job in the jog through stuff of playing with their hands and pad level. Um, you know, I think the, the backers, I think we've gotten some good work at the, the outside linebacker spot, some of the new guys. I think that it's the good to have the secondary, you know, the bulk of the secondary back look like they were communicating. So, you know, just those things week to week you try to improve on. How much does Tajay factor into that exotic stuff you mentioned in the run game and what can you do in terms of going empty or, or lining people up wide or, or uh, going in motion? Well, I think you're just trying to figure out what's – best for you and, and what you can add and what's too much, you know, I think. But, you know, Tajay has, you know, worked hard to, to learn multiple spots, to learn, you know, different places where, where Tim and, you know, the offense, you know, has them lined up. And, um, you know, things just happen quicker when you're an 11 on 11 and, you know, getting into the routes quicker or whenever he's out, out of the backfield or lined up. And I think those things are some with younger players, how quickly the ball has to come out and how quickly you have to become available just because of the pass rush and the time that you have to throw the football. Your vision having some degree more of that stuff just by yeah, I mean, I end. think it was always, you know, let's push the envelope and let's see, you know, what we can do. Let's see what we else we can do. Um, knowing that probably all of it won't stick or all of it won't apply each and every week, but um, it's given our defense a good opportunity to see some, some different schemes. I'm you know, pretty sure we'll be able to run, you know, 18 and 19 stretch and cut, um, but I think that the trying to just figure out what else we can add and what else that we can get good at and um, who can help us at different positions and, and different personnel groups. Last year, a lot of the success that Racy had in preseason before he got hurt was on deep routes. This year, has he added more to his route tree or is that more of a product of the offense that we're seeing him run more, more routes across the middle and things like that? I think it's just a product of where we're off for the installation when you're talking about third and five. You know, I don't know how many deep balls we're going to throw to Racy on third and five. Maybe we'll, we'll let one loose here and there. But I think that may be just a product of what you're seeing uh, on that particular day. Um, start to work in the fringe, so some of that stuff gets eliminated. We're trying to work down into the field. So tomorrow, you won't see many deep balls from the 15. Um, and then maybe next week we may be able to lengthen the field a little bit. What do you need to see from him in terms of taking a step forward beyond just special teams contributions? Well, that would be a good place to start. As like we tell everybody that's looking to earn a role that uh, is your fastest way to, to find a role is on special teams. Being a being an elite special teams player, gunner, disruptive, you know, potentially looking to be able to return to football. Um, you know, and then offensively really just pick up where he left off. And I know that practice is important for everybody, but 
you know, I saw when Racy was out there in training camp and improving and getting better and adjusting to the football down the field, he made some plays and then, you know, unfortunately, you know, had a setback and no fault of his. It's just, you know, I think some of that stuff, um, you know, you have to practice some of that stuff. You have to practice running full speed and 40 yards down the field and being able to adjust to the football and go up and make a play. I'm not sure if you're aware there's an unnamed Colts player who uh, apparently there's gambling tied to him. Uh, if if you are aware and you, you've seen that, does that make you go back and you we? Know, look I at, touched on this last week pretty right, extensively. Right, but I mean that's happened since then. This is something new since. Then. I'm so I'm sure he didn't bet it since the time that I talked but about you it. Made aware of it since then. Made, made aware. Yeah, I got yeah. I got a phone just like you, and we talked to the players extensively about what our responsibility is, and we'll have part of this mini camp is um, education throughout the league. You know, we get some extra time, so that's what we're going to do here. Um, as soon as I finish up with you guys, is start some of those presentations uh, that we have. You know, we have a rookie program that we hit every day, and then there'll be some things for the entire team that we'll have to hit. So that'll be something that we'll cover. If kickoff fair catches take off the way the league seems to hold, is that ultimately going to have a bearing on how teams, how you shape shape a roster, and that that guys who cover kicks or are on kickoff are, are less valuable than they were previously because they're running down to watch a guy wave his hand? Um, well, I would say that the best kickoff players are ones that are physical, aggressive, can run and tackle. So whether we use those players on the kickoff or offense or defense. Take as many of those good guys that can run and hit as humanly possible. You know, everybody's got a choice to make. You know, if you want to fair catch it, that's what the rules say. And if you don't, have at it and, and return it, right? So it, it, it's an opportunity to have a choice to decide, to figure out what you want to do. And, uh, you know, we'll see about all these people complaining about it and see if they fair catch or see if they want to plow it up in there to the 20 yard line. How's Peter handling the, the guard portion of, of his learning so far? <laughs> I probably smell real good. Probably smell real good after practice. Uh, it was bugging me a minute. Yeah. <laughs> you, we probably smell the same, too. So. Um, good. I mean, good. He, he's learning. You know what I mean? He's working hard. I mean, he, he's in there working at, at times with Tier and, and Jeffrey and now Danico today. So, you know, the more work that they can get and, and pass protection in there and and again, that's the thing I respect the most about these guys is that they go, and it's not, you know, just they're half speed, but that they're they're going, and it's they know when to go, and they work, and they play with their hands, and they're, it's limited contact. We're not bull rushing anybody, so I think it's been good work for everybody, and they've been able to to do that and stay away from the quarterback, and for the most part, stay off the ground. Great teams know how to practice, and that's what I try to talk to these guys about. Is the uh, kind of the guard portion of his learning, is it kind of what you expected in terms of a guy trying to learn that? I didn't have any expectations point? other than just come in here and um, find a role and be physical and finish and, you know, play with his hands and, and, and work to the second level, all those things that we're going to ask our linemen to do. Mike, I was going back, and I don't believe you've ever scheduled the offseason where you had mini camp and then still have another week next week. What was the genesis and that change of the schedule for you this year, and what do you hope to get out of the two periods now that they're set up like this? Well, we've always kind of shit-canned that last day of mini camp, and so I didn't want to do that this year, so we just scheduled it this week, and we'll practice three days and go from there. Were you shit-canned the last day of OTAs? Probably, week? yeah. <laughs> you all had the high school coaches. What was your message to them? Uh, the message was uh, one that the, that the high school football in Middle Tennessee has improved since the the time that I've been here as the head football coach. You know, our player, the players have gotten better, the talent's gotten better, the teams have gotten better. Um, more colleges are coming in here to recruit, and so we wanted to do everything that we could to help them. Um, talk to them about what we try to do and what we teach our players and how we teach um, the different learning styles, the different teaching styles that's necessary. Um, th their, their presence and their ability to, to be in the school and to be role models I think is critical uh, in their school. Uh, strength and conditioning we covered. We covered NCAA eligibility, um, how they can help uh, make sure that these players are are in good academic standing so that they can get a scholarship and that they don't wait too late 
and say, hey, we're going to wait till the last senior year and make a big push. That's a lot of credits, and the margin for error gets pretty thin. So trying to stay on top of that stuff early. You know, a lot of these guys, man, they're the head trainer, they're the strength coach, they're the head coach. And so we're trying to give them as much uh, information about all those different things that we possibly can. It, it was great. They asked questions. They were in meetings. So Josh Corey and, and his staff did a fantastic job, and I'm thankful for, for the idea and I'm thankful for the turnout.